Welcome to our follow-up drive time. In this video, I want to show you how to set up and commission an uh, integrated motion controller out of our second generation of motion controllers, the one with the CanOpen interface. So what I'm going to use is this 2232BX4 COD. The motor here in front is the 2232BX4, of course, having linear hall sensors as the encoder and the complete servo drive Control unit is integrated into the back of the motor, the complete unit in the size of my thumb here. The drive electronics is fully compatible with the industry standard, so a CAN in automation 402 servo drive offering operating modes like the profile position mode, the profile velocity mode, and meanwhile even the cyclic synchronous position mode. For the video here, uh, the drive is already built into the demo unit here and connected to one of our adapters. The adapter here is only for convenience. So it's completely passive and the uh, drive electronics, of course, is in the back of the drive here. We use this adapter here to connect power supply and uh, whatever discrete IOs you want to use, for example, uh, for limit switches and for communication, that's the DSUB interface here. And as we use the same DSUB here, for RS-232 and can open, we got these configuration switches down here where you can select the pinout being either RS-232 or a can open interface. So um, to go on, what I need to do is add power supply, of course, 24 volt, uh, and then add communications. And as the PCs don't support CAN interfaces natively, we always have to use such a USB to CAN adapter. We do support uh, several one of these. You will find a list of the supported adapters on our web page, on the page where the motion manager is described. So here I'm using the blue one from Xat, and what I need to add is a cable. And in my lab, I usually use such a flat ribbon cable with these multiple connectors because I usually connect to several of these can open drives. Uh, then connect the flat ribbon to the can adapter and to the drive. And don't forget to add such a termination resistor, 120 ohms, because can is only going to work when you have the termination resistor connected. A second one of these termination resistors is already available on our adapter board. So that's the preparation. Let's switch to the motion manager. First of all, I have to establish a connection between the motion manager and the servo drive. That's done using the connection wizard of the motion manager and the interface here is the CAN interface and here is the adapter. Uh, that is connected to my PC. So let's set up the connection in such a CAN environment. We could either connect to a single device or to a network of devices. When we would connect to a network, then we would to have to know the used communication speed. Whereas here, we're only having a single drive the motion manager can auto identify the used ball rate. So let's do this and search for the drive. And here it is. In this case, you can see it is an unconfigured node here. Unconfigured means there is no uh, valid node ID assigned to the drive. And in our special case, even the initial ball rate is set to be auto-detected. So the benefit of this is you can hook even a couple of them up to whatever network you already have and can configure them within an existing network. In that case, that's the one that I'm going to use. And uh, I'm done here for the first step. And the device tree is populated with my unconfigured node here. Uh, LSS is an uh, acronym for Layer Setting Services. That's one of the communication services that the CanOpen provides. The tools is populated here, and the only tool available here is the one for the connection parameters, and that's used to now assign a valid node number and 
uh, the baud rate that I want to use here. And in that case, I can use the version where I have to configure a single node globally. If it would be a network of these nodes, then I would have to add the product code and serial number of my device here. That's on the sticker in the back of the motor. Valid node numbers are between 1 and 127. So let's use the one here. And please assign a fixed board rate because in a machine using auto negotiation of the communication speeds isn't the best idea. You don't want your drives to uh, negotiate the actual speed at each start of your machine. So please assign a fixed one here. And uh, then I'm done here. The drive is now reconfigured and once again the CAN bus is scanned. And here now we do have the identified device. The picture is down on the left here. And here we now see it's a 2232BX4 in the COD version, so the CAN open version. And the tools on the left side are populated, uh, fitting for this drive here. And the next tool I would use is the select motor wizard. With these integrated units, the motor is of course pre-configured in our end-of-line test station. But we nevertheless use the select motor wizard to preset all the control loops here. So the first step selection of the motor is of course uh, disabled because the motor is fixed here, but the motor supply voltage is a measured one. So in my setup here, that's 24.4 volt because this parameter here is later used to calculate the appropriate um, gains for the control loops. So it might be a good idea to directly do these first steps when using the supply voltage that you want to use in the actual setup later on. Next step, I can select what type of transmission I'm using. So it could either be a gearhead or an additional indirect a transmission like uh, maybe a lead screw or a transmission belt. And in that case, I would have to add the reduction ratio here. And then the last one here is to give an estimate for the actual inertia that is hooked up to the motor because the inertia is the dominating factor for the uh, selection of the gains for the position loop and for the speed loop. In that case here, second generation of our drivers, there is no auto identification of the inertia. So I have to guess. And uh, the disc here that I'm using in my demo is roughly in a, a range of five gram centimeters square. So it's a perfect match for this motor here. I could use alternatively the slider here down here to give a rough estimate. And the last one here would be to preset whether the tuning of the loops initially should be for either quiet running or high dynamics. In many so applications, it would be for the high dynamics, of course. So uh, that's it. We get a summary of all the parameters that are going to be applied now. And if this would be an external driver, the next step would be to not only download the settings here, but to also teach in these linear hall signals that are used as the single feedback here, because the amplitudes of these hall sensors differ slightly from motor to motor. Here for the integrated one, that's of course done at our end of line test station, so you don't have to do it. We are finished here, transfer the parameters, and I can save them, but I don't necessarily save them because next step would be a tuning where I once again change the parameters anyways. So we are done with setting up uh, communication and selection of uh, the transmission here. And next step would be the tuning or operating the drive here using one of the tools like the motion cockpit. The tuning is identical to uh, the steps used for the RS-2 version. So um, I don't show it here separately, but a small difference is when we use this for the first time, there is a warning that one of the PDOs 
uh, that the CAN is using here is going to be uh, reconfigured and that the drive first has to be switched on into the operational state of the communication. So after confirming both warnings, the tool is opening up, but operating the tool is the same as for the RS-262 and that's a separate video. Meanwhile, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask our local sales team or our MC support team. And of course, check back with our channel and you might as well leave a comment down here. And thanks for watching and bye.